Hello, I'm Jeanette, the bush cook. Today I'm at Peter McKinvin's place and he's going to cut up this magnificent pig for us. What we're going to do today is slice the pig in half down the middle. He's got a brand new saw just for the p purpose. And then we're going to cook it on top of the wood stove. This is Cape York cooking at its best. This is Peter and this is his pig. sharing it with us today. Right okay. Um, I'm gonna need somebody else here. Yeah, I'll give you Because I've got to sort through it, so you know that. This is a three-man job. The time's come to put the pig on the top of the stove. I've oiled the top of the stove and it's quite greasy from cooking fish last night. It's directly on top of the stove. A bit more oil in the middle of the pig. And the secret ingredients, this is Peter McKinvin's secret recipe, soy sauce and honey, liberally douse it. Now this is going to sit here for about four hours, teasing us while we have a few beers. Honey, liberal splash of honey all over. Already it's starting to smell good. Cape York pig. Yeah. Every now and then just give it a, a little base. And uh, the secret to the perfect pig is going to be keeping this moderate heat in the wood stove. I've had the pig on the fire now for about, about oh, an hour and a half and as you can see it's getting to be pretty tantalizing with the smells that are coming through. I'm going to leave it just for a little longer and then I'm going to turn it over. It's looking great. I've had the pig on now for about two and a quarter hours and it's time to turn it over. I'll show you how I can tell that it's time to turn it over. So let's have a look at the pig. Come in close here, John. Can you see how that dark red is oozing out? When you see that, then it's time to turn the pig. Okay, I'm going to turn it over. John. Let's lift it up by its leggies. Okay, now I need to put some more honey and soy on this side. I've got some more honey and soy to put on this side of the pig, so be pretty liberal with it. it does not look great. The skin is crackling nicely. A liberal squirt of honey all over it. And now we're going to just let it sit there for an hour or so. So I'll come back to that in an hour or so. Now I'm going to get started on the veggie curry that we're going to have with the pig. Okay, this is the first stage of the veggie curry. The oil's hot, just a couple of spoon, tablespoons of oil. And this is two large onions that I'm starting off the veggie curry with. So I'll cook them down for a while, and when they're nice and soft and succulent, I'll show you the next stage. The onions are nicely softened. I'll show you how I put the spices in. The spices I'm using today are cumin and coriander. 
Now I'm cooking for children with this meal. So this meal will feed about 10 people tonight and there'll be a few children. So I'm not going to make it a very hot curry. It'll be mild to medium. So a couple of liberal spoonfuls of coriander. A cup, oh, that was the cumin. And the same again with the coriander. A couple of liberal spoonfuls of coriander. Then I'm going to use a mild curry powder as well. Good shake of mild curry powder. And this is a very hot curry paste. So I'm not going to use a lot of this because I've got children eating as well. So one spoonful of the quite spicy curry paste. Now the, the trick with doing the Indian curry is to make sure that these spices are nicely fried. And then you don't get that powdery taste in your curry that can sometimes be a worry. So cook it for a few minutes. It doesn't take long, just a couple of minutes. Can you get a good shot of that in there, John, to show how it's browning? If only you could smell it. It just smells so beautiful, so aromatic. Well, the spices are all browned nicely. I'm going to add the garlic. As usual, a whole bulb of garlic. A good knob of ginger. I always put these in at the end. I don't like the, uh, the garlic and the ginger burning. So we'll give that a bit of a stir around, a minimal sort of a fry with the garlic and the ginger. And then I'll add the water. Looks like I'm pouring in vodka, but in fact it was a vodka bottle of water. All right. While that's simmering away, I'll get on to the uh, next stage and cut up the green apples, which is the secret ingredient of the vegetable curry. All right, this is the next stage. I've just had that simmering while I've been cutting up the apples. So I've got two large green apples that I've chopped up finely. Now, by the time the curry's made, these apples will have disintegrated into the sauce and just give us a, a luscious taste. Okay, now this is another secret ingredient in my vegetable curry. This is an original recipe. What it is, is a tin of baked beans. And no one will ever know by the time this curry's finished that there are baked beans in the curry because they also disintegrate into the sauce. One small tin of tomato paste. And this makes the base of the curry for the vegetables. The vegetables I'll be using today will be pumpkin, carrots, potatoes and peas. But what we've seen happen here is the base sauce. Now because I want those beans and apples to disintegrate, I'm going to add a little bit more water and simmer this gently for a while before I add the veggies. Because if I add the veggies too soon, the veggies will be cooked and start breaking up before the beans and the apple have broken up. Pig's going along really well, and it's time to put another log on the fire. Got one log in there doing well, so I'm going to put another one in. This is a continual job. All afternoon, every half hour or so, I've been putting a log on the fire. The aim is to have the fire just right, not too hot, or the whole thing will be just black on the outside and raw in the middle. But we've got it right today. It's going beautifully. 
I've had the sauce simmering away for about a half an hour and it's driving everyone mad with succulent smells. I've also got the carrots in there. These are just large chunks of carrot. Now I've put them in before the potatoes because they take a bit longer to cook than the potatoes. You can see how the sauce is forming and the little bits of apples are mushing up. It's time now to put the potatoes in. Now that's a whole heap of potatoes. I'm going to have to add a bit more water so that the potatoes are covered. I'm not going to put the pumpkin in yet. I've got the pumpkin ready. But the pumpkin doesn't take as long to cook as the potato and it mashes up through the curry, so I'm going to leave that for a while. Just adding some water to cover the potatoes. And I'll put the lid on and I'll let that simmer away for about a half an hour. Well, it's just getting dark and I'm just about to finish off the curry. The pork will be done soon. And let's have a look at the curry. This has been bubbling away with the veggies in it for about an hour. Now I've put in there four carrots, half a pumpkin, and must have been seven or eight potatoes in that magic sauce that I've already given you the recipe for. Now this is powdered coconut milk that I've mixed up with water that I'm going to add at the end. I, I travel with powdered coconut milk. In town I use tins. But with space limitations, powdered coconut's the go when you're on Cape York. starting to look pretty luscious and you can smell the coconut now. Have a look, a close look at the sauce. You see there's no chunks of apple or baked bean, which you might expect. They've just all dissolved into the sauce. The last ingredient is the peas. I've had these dried peas cooking separately because I don't like to put the water from the dried peas into the um, curry mix. I don't like cooking them in there because they don't get soft enough. So separately cook the dried peas and into the curry. So the veggies in this curry are onions, garlic, ginger, peas, carrots, potatoes and pumpkin. Now we're not ready to eat yet but I'm going to just turn this off and let it sit and because I do that it will taste even better. The veggies seem to absorb the curry sauce. Now what you have to do is put your own pepper and salt in this. Time to turn over the pig. The curry's cooked and is sitting mellowing. Lee's got the pot of rice on and I'm going to turn this pig over. I just blew a fat juice in. Looking mighty fine. Well, I've turned it over now, and I'm going to just pierce it here and have a look at the colour of the juices that run out. Now, it's pretty hard to see against the black, but it's still a bit of red in the juice, so I'll leave it for a bit longer. Now that it's turned over, we need to oil and soy and honey it up a bit more. A bit more of the light olive oil. A bit more of the soy. And another squeeze of honey all over. It's time to test the meat. Peter's going to do it now. He's going to just shove the knife right into the guts of it. And what colour is that juice, Peter? Still a little bit it's, pink? No, she's cooked. She's cooked? This one down here is what I'll order that. We need to turn it around. Front leg's cooked. Front leg's cooked. So everything's looking great. Look, look, looking good for eating in about a half an hour. It's so tantalising. You can't believe how hungry we are after sitting here all afternoon, drinking beers all afternoon and smelling this, but it won't be long now. Under instructions from the maestro, more salt, more soy, more honey. So that's what we're going to do now. In the final stages, I actually haven't put any salt on this pig up until now. I'm putting the salt on now. Plenty of salt. More soy. Pour it on, pour it on. 
more soy. And plenty more honey. I'm starting to realise this is a pretty expensive dish while we're buying a pig and all this honey and all this soy. But we deserve it. This is the moment we've been waiting for. The pig is ready. Look at the crowd that's gathered. There's hordes of people here for it. And unbelievably, the grower of the pig has arrived. I've got Toby here with me tonight to carry it over to the table and carve it up. Thanks, Toby. Let's do it. Toby grew these pigs on the property and we're going to taste the fruits of his labour tonight. We're ready to do it. Toby's sharpening the knife. He grew this pig so he knows when this pig's just right. Let's have a look at the way he attacks it. Looks good, Toby. Looks perfectly cooked, moist and juicy. Beautiful. And if Toby says it's beautiful, it means we've cooked his pig just right. Well, it's not red at all. No, there's no, I can't see any pink in there. No. And this is the haunch, this is the, yeah. the part where it's likely to be red if it's going to be red. So we've done it beautifully. Juicy. Yeah, it cooks really slow. Well, Toby, we put this on at 1.30. What's the time now? Is anybody? Um, 15. 20 to 9. So this has been on for seven hours. And it's been basted continuously with honey and soy. And so juicy. Can you believe how juicy this pork is? Bit of a fillet there. Oh, that's the tender part, Toby. Yeah, that's beautiful. So, Toby, when you were growing the pigs, how many pigs did you have at a time? Um, yeah, I. I a boar and two sows, so out of each litter I'd get maybe seven or eight out of each litter, maybe up to ten, so I'd end up with like twenty little pigs like this out of one litter. And how old is this pig that we're eating tonight? Uh, three or four months. Three or four months? Yeah. And it looks like the perfect in size to me. It is, it's perfect, yeah. Would yeah. you call this a yeah, suckling pig? Um, no, no, the suckling pig is actually still sucking on its mother. It's oh. only a little one like that. This is sort of the next step up, I think. What's your opinion about the way we cooked your pig, Charlie? Absolutely perfection. Oh, thank you. And what a miracle it is. It's perfection. It's moist and succulent. There's not a hint of dryness and there's not a hint of red, red blood or anything. It's just perfect. And the kids are all eating now and loving it. Oh, thank you, Toby. Peter, your recipe worked magnificently. It's cooked. He gets the haunch off. Look, he's getting the haunch off. Look at that. Moist and juicy. Oh, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. We're going to cut the ribs up in a minute. So succulent. Yeah, it's very nice. Mm. So, Toby, you're getting out of pigs now and getting into turkeys. Yeah. The pigs are um, proved a bit difficult to keep the feed up to in, in such a remote area. And you think the turkeys will require less feed for, for more uh, flesh output? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite excited about the turkeys. Yes, yes. Yeah, at the moment. The pig is perfection, everyone's humming as they eat, they're loving it. And Toby's done a magnificent job of carving it so that it all goes around nicely. Thanks Toby. What do you think Tam? Yeah. Just good. Yeah, I mean it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> 
I'm serving out a portion of Cape York curry veg and Cape York pig. We've got the pot of rice cooked by Lee, proper Chinese rice, the magnificent curry veg with pumpkin, potato, carrot, pea, onion, garlic and ginger. <laughs> And I'm going to add a few slabs of pork and what a magnificent meal that's for anyone on Cape York. We've got the curry, we've got the rice, perfectly cooked rice by Lee, beautifully cooked curry by me and magnificent pork by, by Toby who grew it, by McKinvin who uh, provided it and McKinvin's advice for cooking it, isn't it wonderful? This is it, the end product, the magnificence of Cape York cuisine. Who wouldn't want to eat that on Cape York?